I don't know why, but I did video essays on both Season 1 and Season 2 of 13 Reasons Why. So it would be weird if I didn't do Season 3. Now did I? Whoopsie, I already did it. It's the po- it's an episode on my new podcast, podcast. Um, and yeah, because it's such a massive thing for my channel and for me personally, I decided I'll just put it as a, you know, in video format here. It's like there's nothing there's nothing interesting in the video per se, but I don't know, I just I, I just want it to be on YouTube. All right. Uh, with that being said, here's my thoughts on 13 Reasons Why, as well as Geforia. Enjoy! Okay, so this season, where the hell do I begin? Okay, I have like three pages, I, I have like two pages for the first draft alone for the notes. So yeah, I'm gonna try to summarize this as much as I can, 25 minutes segment. Let's go. Um, so the inclusion of a new character, Ani. So we start off with a new character, Ani, who's the, who's the narrator of the show. She replaces Hannah. I think like, that's that's what we think that she is. She she replaces Hannah, and like um, she's she's just like us. She knows very little. That's that's the first episode I think. But then it turns out that she's that she knows that she knows a lot, and she has been slowly gathering up information and like you know telling Standall. That's that that's the reveal of that entire you know the reveal of the entire like last episode of the season. Like she's a, she like the entire narration is a story to a story to the chief standoff, like Alex's dad, um, about like oh how everyone is, as evidenced by the line that like Standall is like like the chief is like oh you 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 know what the you know who the killer is, but then Ani is like yeah but I also want to tell you why everyone has their reason to do it to kill Bryce in the first place. Um, so again, with this show, everyone has their reasons. No one is good. That's that's what I mean by nuances, right? No one is good. And no one is bad either. They all have their flaws, and like it keeps it, keep, it still keeps you wondering and guessing about and and who's what, I guess. So it tells you one thing, and it keeps going, and it keeps you and it keeps you guessing. That's what I really like about this season, particularly. It's it's it's, it's, it's a massive step up from season two wherein it was like boring and unnecessary but season three it shows us a different light of everyone and uh okay just to be sure because like i saw on twitter that a lot of people are like are mostly confused about what's the difference between the time jumps so eight months ago so, so the time jump is as follows right before bryce dies the screen is much more brighter and and like the aspect ratio fits with your screen like fit, fits with a tv screen right and it's much more full screen, with um, with the with the present day, the brightness is it's it's darker. It's much more darker. Seriously, look at it. It's much more darker, and it and the aspect ratio keeps shrinking. Like there are black bars on the top, so it's like it's it's like I don't know, cinemascope, I guess. That's that's what it's called. Um, I don't know. I'm not very sure about the, uh, the like the entire like what's what's the terminology of the aspect ratios and all that. But all I know that the aspect ratio shrinks down, like, the shot widens, I'm guessing? Yeah, the shot widens, um, like, vertically, or what? Horizontally. The shot horizontally widens, and the entire, like, contrast and, right, the, the entire, like, co color correction is turned down. It's, like, much more darker. Okay, that being said, uh, let's just, let's slowly talk about every single plot point, which I, which I think that we can talk about. So, um, Ani, she knows, she knows a lot. But then, like, she keeps messing with us that she knows a lot. Because even though we just know her, she can't really, like, she she keeps jumping around like she knows everything. So, I, I get why people really hate Ani. But having a narrator on, having a new narrator, and having a new character to interact with, you know, the core characters, it makes you feel like you're interacting with them again in a whole different light. Like you're seeing a different side of them to a different person who doesn't know anything about Hannah, who doesn't know anything about the prior two seasons, who only knows what little she knows, and like you know, and and she is and she keeps like you know, she keeps learning about things and she keeps making her own assumptions and she keeps inferring and guessing. So she's basically the audience's point of um, view when it comes to these kind of shows. When it comes to this show. So she she keeps guessing, she keeps theorizing, and then she keeps also jumping to conclusions. She's a she's a little buddy cop thing to Clay, to Jensen, um, and uh, she, 
and like that dynamic turns from friends to lovers very quickly. But then you kind of want, but in it, but in a way, deep down, I kind of wanted that, kind of wanted them to like you know, start, like you know, start a relationship together because like the both of them really like each other. It's very obvious. But then, in the flashback scenes, it's turned out that she's been she's been banging Price, uh, the rapist. So. Um, and starting straight off, they address the cliffhanger in season two, which is the entire guns debacle, which is something that I really, like, I, I, I hated in season two, which is like, oh, the guns are not really that, uh, duck, the guns are not really that, like, important, like, they, they tease Tyler's inclusion of guns in season one, they only got that, um, they only pull through with that in season two, uh, and then season three onwards, it's... The, there's no guns, oh no. <laughs> um, but then, like, you you get this constant, like, but then Tyler is... But then, one thing's for sure, Tyler's in trouble, right? Like, you understand that Tyler is, you know, is help. It, it, like, he needs help. And he, he's been through some stuff, as evidenced by the fact that he got raped by the uh, by Monty and his friends with a broomstick. Season 2's uh, more graphic sequence. Um, and it's... And, again, it's much more, you know... Uh, I guess it's like it's nicer learning that Tyler has his his circle of companionship always around him, and it's also understandable that he would feel overwhelmed with that. And however, he doesn't really get overwhelmed with that because I think he actually likes that that company always. And um, even though he doesn't really view any of them friends, he's, he still appreciates their company regardless. Yeah, and. Uh, and Tyler is one of those people who re who are the most important. Tyler has a massive importance in this season, and that's great because he's been mostly pushed to the side. And ever since his uh, last episode in season two, um, he's been mainly uh, mostly the spotlight has been on him in season in the end of season two and the entirety of season three, because like his his entire healing process, it's 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 super well done. It's very um it's very down to earth it's very raw like and it's it's easily it's easily digestible it's very easy to understand and sympathize with Tyler you know and um and to be and then we realize what's the entire like you know what's the whole thing with him and all that and that's that's super sad isn't it and like even then that the most the most raw moment that in, in the entire season one of them is the um, is the scene where Tyler tells Clay uh, that he was assaulted, and like the entire and like the sl the slowly like him him breaking down, the stammering, and then like Clay's especially Clay's like shock at that all that, and uh, him instead of going into a hug, this is honestly my favorite detail from that entire scene, is him asking Tyler whether he can hug him. Because, again, Clay understands that Tyler is... He doesn't want anyone to touch him. Because, you know, sexual assault. Um, so, the, the asking, that's that's just much more, like... Ah, uh, just seriously. It's it's so good. It's so raw, and it's super well done. It's amazingly well done. This is one of those high moments in... This is one of those things that makes the show so polarizing. Like, the fact that... Um, like the fact that like you have controversial scenes like what you saw in season one and season two, but in season three, they but they also have these kind of like raw moments, like raw emotional bits, like much more quiet moments, and you really sympathize for the characters there, and you really feel for them. You really feel like like whatever they are feeling, and that's amazing. That's amazingly done. The writing is just so good, and like their performances. Oh my god, their performances you can't really uh, you can't really discount. Their performances sells the sold the entire thing, okay. But with that said, uh, season three's entire like shtick, like its, its entire spiel, is about like who killed Bryce, right? Usually, you would expect no one to really care about who killed, uh, no one to really care about Bryce. But here, they make Bryce into a much more sympathetic character. Like his even his actor Justin Pretense, uh, yeah, Justin Pretense has like even he has said himself like. You know, being a douchebag for the first two seasons, and then having a whole new layer of humanity, even though he does relapse into his old price, like the more douchebaggery. Like again, it's it's nice, you know. Like he he realized that he he has messed up, 
and he is honestly trying to change. So good on him. Honestly, it's good on him. 